Hello and welcome to week 7 of the ARC map development. And this week we're going to talk about rivers and lakes and how to set them up. Just as a little bit of a roadmap, this week we're talking about rivers and lakes. Next week we're going to talk about caves and the following week we're going to deal with making the sky not a blank white piece of trash. But let's hop right into these rivers and lakes. The first thing we need to remember is that we enabled level streaming. And this allows us to load our static meshes and our foliage and our waterfalls and our dino spawns separately from our main level. I've set up a slight waterfall scene here. In the editor so we can start to see and understand some of how this works it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but it is a reasonable start for you to start to understand exactly how much minutia and tight editing goes into creating a scene that looks plausible to the player from all angles i've just placed a water plane here on this lake and the one that I find to be most useful when we're placing water planes for lakes is to is the oasis water plane so if we search water plane if we go into our actual search and we search come on water plane we see that we can find the water plane for almost every map. And the one that I find most useful for lakes and ponds is the Oasis water plane. It's not very large and it's pretty easy for us to scale to our needs. Um, so just like the huge water plane that's on our entire map. So if we zoom out to the landscape, we have one giant water plane that's all the way around. We have a much smaller one that I've placed solely here. There are some limitations on it. So like for example, I'll come here to the edge of this waterfall and you can see that we've hit the edge of this water plane and we need to do something to fix that. Um, but we'll get into that later. But this water plane itself is pretty nice for a, a small pond area. So if you're, you have like a, on the center there's like beaver ponds and stuff like that the deeper it is the darker the color from above um that's just how the water planes work they are based on distance below so if you don't want a darker area in the center just raise up the landscape below and you should be fine Additionally, if you are concerned with having a particular shape to your water plane, so you want, for example, for there to be a river that matches this exact specification, there's a couple ways around it. So when we're making a river, there's several options open to us. We can either use a lake water plane like this, but I often find that these lake water planes are not the right color for the rivers. If you notice on every map with the exception of the center in which the rivers are connected to the ocean on either side, on every map where there's a river that's a small river that leads to the ocean, those rivers are usually clear. And that comes from one of the materials that's called the cave water underscore mat island underscore MIC. You can see it here. This is just a material choice that they make when it comes to the rivers so they can show off the intricate details of their rivers. And there's two ways that we can implement it. We can create our own mesh in Blender in which we take a 2D plane, shape it to the general shape of the river that we're going for. So if we want a 2D plane, we just, I'd essentially take a screenshot from directly above and then model something in Blender that's a 2D plane that matches up with that 2D shot and import that as a static mesh. 
or we can just sort of piece together with some other existing static meshes. So, for example, Lake Ruins, I believe it's in one word. This is really slow to type. Yes, Lake Ruins water plane. When you import it, actually, let me switch to the, um, let me switch to the water level. Yeah, okay, so that one's active. The Lake Ruins water plane, when you import it, is really, really small. And this is so you can directly influence what we want. So we need a bit of water to cover the top of this waterfall that goes down to this amphitheater. And it needs to not overlap with the second bit of water. As you can see, it makes it dark. It's not really what you want. So we can do that with a static mesh or we can create our own. For this small river, I'll probably just do it with a static mesh. Um, but for larger rivers, I might end up making my own in, in Blender. This area will be covered up by particle effects anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So as you can see, we can sort of piece together a, a water plane that will fit our needs. It's not perfect, but we'll use particle effects here and a volume spawn to really do what we need to do here. The larger plane that's here, this ocean's water plane, or Lake Ruins water plane one, covers from this section of the river all the way up to the top here. And we can just hide it underneath the, the landscape. So you can see as I go underneath the landscape, there is actually this, this water plane that's under the land. That's not really an issue unless you're planning to do a cave. If you are doing planning to do a cave, I would really recommend making a 2D plane in Blender and then importing it as a static mesh and then applying one of the materials as a texture to that static mesh. And for what it's worth, you can apply any of the materials to that static mesh so it looks like water. So when you search water in your content browser, there are numerous water materials that show up. There are these ones that are circular and they're called material instances. So there's frozen water, water, cave water, cave water, mat island, and the list goes on and on as you go through all the different waters. There's lake water and so on. And you can drag these onto this material element here once you import your static mesh. So If I want to change the water material that is on this river that I have already, and I want to change it to lake water, let me just search for lake here. We can see that it gains the same color as the one up here. And our other one, which we had not done, would need to be changed to the same one. So now our river's all the same material, and it looks like it flows. We also need to talk about particle effects. The Unreal Engine uses a particle system to do a lot of visual effects such as waterfalls or even combat spells. And the 
and the waterfalls and arc are no different. They are generally made of 2D textures that are sent out at a particular vertex to give the appearance of a 3D effect happening. So for example, this particle effect sends out a wave towards the edge of the waterfall. And if I push it out, we can see this effect a little more. This is the top of the waterfall, huge waterfall top particle effect that they use. We can create these on our own. Um, let me just undo this and I will show you. So if we search waterfall top, we can see this particle system that the Unreal Engine uses. The particle system in Unreal Engine is extremely detailed and we don't frankly have time to go into the nuances of how to create one from scratch, but it will use a 2D texture which you import and then you give it certain parameters um, such as uh, how much it warms up so it takes a second for it to start and go all the way to the end. Um, you can set up things such as like pre-warm up. So when it first loads, it's loading as if it's been running for a second. So it's fully, so the effect is fully happening in the scene. You can have a lot of distance. You can change the speed and the direction and the randomness of every aspect of this 2D sprite that's coming out we can change the color over life so as we can see in our scene up here it's more blue at the top and it switches out towards white as it finishes and there's an alpha change in that meaning that it's more transparent as it gets to the end there's a lot of things to to wrangle with when you're making your own particle system if it's your first time and you just are trying to make your own map that you can play with your friends I would highly recommend you sort of piece together what you can from the particle systems that are in the content browser. But if you really feel like you're up to taking on the task and there's interest, I will do a video down the road on how to set up a particle emitter and how that can be used in a arc map level. But Everything that you see on this waterfall that I've set up, and we'll set up one of our own, was set up with pre-made meshes and particle emitters. I don't really need anything else for such a small waterfall. I may end up doing a larger waterfall over here on the volcanic island when I get to it, and I may end up having to make my own particle emitter. I might make a YouTube video on how to do it when I get there. Um, but for right now, I'm just trying to make this simple little river that comes off this lake and comes down and, and really is one of the starting locations for the player on our map. So they get an entrance to sort of the lower difficulty area coming up to this higher difficulty, but it's still not the same difficulty that you would see in like a snow biome or a carnivore biome which will largely be on the volcano island and the snow island over there and potentially another mini carnivore island over there. So let's get started on trying to put together this second waterfall. And I think one of the most overlooked parts of making a waterfall is it's you're not necessarily just dragging in a particle effect, rotating it and being like, okay, well, it's working now we're done. Um, 90 percent of the work that goes into a waterfall or any really any particle system in a game is disguising the particle system so that so that the player perceives it as a real event. So right now we have edges of our particle system hanging off and we can make this smaller to a certain extent until it becomes too small for the 2D image that it's using as a particle system. 
But what we really need to do is use static meshes to disguise this a little bit. And you can see it up here that I did it a little bit. This isn't a finished product up here, but I've used three rocks to sort of disguise this particle effect. And I might add a fourth one over here. Um, perhaps change these pillars out to large cliff faces or something like that. But I want to preserve the idea of basalt columns creating an amphitheater for waterfalls. Um, this is something that you find in nature, uh, particularly if you look into Iceland or you know various places throughout Europe, you'll find basalt columns in places of high volcanic activity. Since this map is centered around a volcano, I think that basalt columns fit pretty well with our waterfalls. So we're just gonna lower this down till we get it to the same level as the water. Uh, I think that's right about there. Yeah, that's about right. So this is the first part. We want there to be rapids leading up to a waterfall. So we really need to create some type of way to hide the fact that this is just a particle effect. If a player comes up to it from this side, this looks pretty normal. This looks like water's accelerating downhill about to fall off a cliff. But if a player comes up to it from this side, they're like, okay, well, I can see the edge of the water there. And I can see that it's just starting from a line. Um, so we'll use some rocks underwater or a cliff face or something like that to help sell this idea to to a player so as you can see i've created an area here that really takes your eyes away from the particle effect system i might add a little bit more on this top side later but for all intents and purposes we have a large element to the right a large element to the left as well as a few smaller elements in the static meshes that create sort of a cluttered scene that's really going to draw their eyes away from the origin of the waterfall, which is your ultimate goal in a situation like this. So what I would do if I'm not making my own particle system now is to search for waterfall. And here we're going to go look through not just static meshes, but all particle systems. And we'll see that there's quite a few particle systems that they've created. You'll see, notice that all particle systems are designated with this red triangle on the top left. You can either look by that or denote with a check mark on particle system and you'll find all the different particle systems that are labeled as waterfalls when you search for just waterfall particle systems. And there's quite a few different options. Um, some of them are not as good as others. Uh, so I believe this was, I'm not sure if this is still used in the game, but I think this was an early attempt at a waterfall system. They create drops when you can see the 2d element is really like a crescent and then they spring them up a little bit and then drop them down. And if the camera interacts, sometimes you'll get a water droplet, not always. Um, it's not really that great because, I mean, first and foremost, the first problem is that it splashes the water up initially, um, which might be okay in some small situations where you're like going over a rapid and you want there to be a splash. Um, but for the most part, this, this particle system just, I, I don't think I would use it much at all. Um, the next particle system is a mist generator and it's quite large. I may end up using one at the bottom, um, but we would have to go into the actual particle system, open this up and change the size of it here. Um, but I, I'll end up messing with this later. I don't really want to mess with the size. 
and I'm not sure that ultimately that I'm going to put it here. I will mess with the size if I end up deciding that this amphitheater needs mist at the bottom. I don't think it does as of right now. Um, this particle system is a particular favorite of mine. This is just a splash that falls, but it doesn't have to fall. You can see that if I put this splash down near the water, it really just, oh, it's not actually at the water yet. It's really hard to lose or to gain a sense of scale here. This particle system, if we make the duration of the particle system short, can really be used as a sort of effect that emulates water landing in other water. So if I were to change the duration that this is active to be a much shorter particle system, that would be something that we could potentially use if our misty water were to be getting to this this amphitheater. But for this particular waterfall chain, I really want this to be sort of a slow, not much water is falling here. Like, yes, this is quite misty and it looks like there's a lot. But if you look at the actual particle effects and you're in among it, it's not gallons of water. It's just sort of mist coming off the waterfall. So I want this to be sort of a slow moving river, which doesn't necessarily equate to huge amounts of water splashing into a, to an amphitheater. The next one that they use is actually moderately useful. This is water that will always point towards the camera even in the editor or if you're in the game it will present its broadside to the camera of the player so if i vote it from this side it shows me the 2d asset from this side straight on it shows me the 2d asset from this side and to the right obviously it does the same thing so by itself this isn't that great but if we can duplicate it or make it combined with other effects, it can actually be used quite well. So I'm going to rotate this slightly, pitch it out just a little, maybe 10%. Yeah. We're going to move this back to the edge of here and we're going to create a few of these. So we have these five waterfall systems. We'll need to move some of them back or rotate as a whole. I think that's probably the best bet. And then move back slightly. And then pull out. we can create what really looks like water or mist starting to come down off the edge. This one is out of place. Let's slide that over. So we could change the uh, distance that these are traveling and we may end up changing the rotation
But if this is a trick in Unreal Engine, if you hold Alt and Shift, this is really for building walls of a building or something like that. But if you hold Alt and Shift and then use your arrow, you can create doubles. Which really works pretty well with the particle system. Um, you can create this cascading flow of water over the edge. So here, we really want to show that there's multiple paths through this water. There seems to be one coming out here, one coming out here, one coming through this basalt column, and one over here. This will require a little more touch-up of, of aspects, but um, we really want to create this facade of water turning into a mist and falling down into this amphitheater. We don't want to shift it that much. I might just take this guy here and create a new one in the middle here. So it breaks up the pattern just a little. So now we have this cascading river that looks fairly close to what we might expect a waterfall to look like an arc. Um, but it, it's worth noting that this is not a finished product. And especially in areas where you expect the player to be able to get, as this is a starting island, we really expect the player to be able to run up over here, across this mountain, and be able to be in this stream, looking down out over the water, and up at other waterfalls. We really want to make this realistic. So this is a start, but it is not a finished product. Um, but it is sort of where we're standing right now. We might end up adding some mist down here. And it, you can also use some of their particle systems to point up coming out of the water. So. If we use this splashing water here, I'm, I'm not going to use this splashing water. I really am not sure why it's in the game. But if we were to rotate it 180 degrees, that's way too far. Sometimes this can be pretty finicky. We can see that we're shooting a particle effect into the air now. Let me pull it away from the water so we can see. And this can be used to great effects when we're shooting like mist. If we were to create mist, we want the mist to come up from the waterfall or even outwards in this direction from the water coming down and hitting the water. It's really a matter of creating some type of deception for the player because you don't have to make a waterfall. You have to make something that makes the player believe that there is a waterfall. And this is done through a lot of 2D lot of 2d sprites being generated and it's one of the reasons that you'll find that that water is one of the more intensive aspects of load leveling and things of that nature i hope this has helped you learn sort of how to make a more believable scene when it comes to waterfalls and rivers and hasn't left you with too too many questions if you do have any please let me know in the comments below i'm more than happy to help please like comment subscribe all that jazz anything you do really helps us and we'll see you next week